Hey guys, what's Greg? Lost Wrench Garage. Today we're going to be rebuilding the calipers and putting brake pads in. Got the rebuild kit for the calipers. Why don't you grab yourself something to drink? Maybe some ginger juice or a cold beer. Let's do it. We're going to do our video shout out to Ben's uh, ben Molesworth over in the UK, his channel, well, I got it kind of messed up here. It, it's called Tasty, Tasty Classics UK. Some good stuff. If you're into long videos, very entertaining, real good, real good stuff. Uh, but I'm putting this out to you guys. I put the challenge out. Help other channels out. Give them a shout out. Kind of like what I'm doing right here. Helps their channel out. And plus, if they put do a shout out back to you, it helps you out. So, here's a shout out to Ben over at Tasty Classics UK. I'll put the link up above. Right here. I'll move my head so you can see it. And down in the link, uh, it's just comment section below. So, let's get to these calipers and brakes. Now here's the passenger side, which I have already finished rebuilding this one. And uh, I am going to be getting new lines. Uh, I'm going to be replacing the steel lines, which these ain't bad. They've got a little bit of surface rust, but just to be on the safe side, that's what I want to do. Uh, well, we're going to go over on the passenger side and get that caliper off. I already have it dismounted from the car, but I'll show you what you need to do there and get the caliper loose hopefully i may have to remount it let's go over there and i'll show you and uh because to crack the line loose it's going to be tough with it just sitting here so i may have to throw the bolts back in which are on the back side and uh might turn the steering wheel so this is turned so i can work on it a little easier but i want to break this line loose unspin it and then we'll start uh tearing it apart over there on the bench i put the caliper back on and i put the bolts back in the back you can't see them but they're back here uh just to let you know that they're a 5 8 bolt head so if you want to remove those, that's what size you'll need. But I, I mounted it back on so I can get some leverage and just pull this uh, spring back and slip it over the, over the fitting and just give it a love tap. These have been coming, I've been, I hit these with blaster. Oh, a few days ago, a couple times I hit the the, the bleeder screw. Uh, I hit the screws for the mount to separate. I forgot to hit those though, but hey, it is what it is. But I'm gonna set you back up, get this off, and then meet you over on the bench. I'm gonna do so. I'm gonna try and crack this bleeder loose. I should have done this when it was on the car. Didn't think about it. I don't have a deep well deep enough, but it still can be done with a uh, shorter socket. You just can't put the wrench all the way into the socket to uh, get a good bite on it. But and maybe turn that around and get better leverage. Might have to put it in the vise. There we go. Still gonna need to use the wrench on it. Something to grab hold of. Now I'm just going to take the bleeder, set it off to the side. I have a little container 
which I'm putting stuff in and uh, try and drain some of this fluid out. much as you can and the passage goes through I think goes through this side if I'm not mistaken over to this uh, pot you want to lift it up angled to where you'll get it to drain the last one I did the uh, probably good enough it was all gummed up in there so that's the reason why I'm going to be pulling it apart and uh, cleaning everything up so next I want to do is bust these four loose. Uh, find my little bit of plaster, which I didn't soak these ones down, which I I should have done a while back when I did these. Just let that soak in a little touch. Uh, I am going to have to put this in the vise because I know I won't be able to hold on to that. These are half inch. Just to let you know. Just loosen them up a little bit. Like to re tighten them a little bit just to make sure the threads are going to be clean. There we go. That one's not coming out by hand. These are. Barely. Just corroded down in there. Already coming apart on me. Okay, we'll set these off to the side and reset you up. Just to show you that on the back side, that there is a seal in between the two, which this one here is the hole that goes over and it would be on like that. Uh, you do not get them in these kits, so you have to order it separately. So what I am going to do is I'm just going to reuse it. Uh, it's still soft and pliable it, it'll work so the next thing we are going to do is set one off to the side and we're going to pull the snap ring which holds the boot down these boots are still fairly good soft but since i got the new kit <coughs> we're just going to replace them anyways because these pistons on the last side, last one, <clears throat> I I reused them. I cleaned them up, which they came out good. I'm hoping these ones will too. If not, then I have to order new pistons, which through uh, Moss Motors, they are ten bucks a piece. So you're talking forty bucks just in pistons alone. 
uh, the kit, if I recall, was nine bucks. Uh, I'd have to look at the paperwork, but I'm thinking right around there. And then the brake pads and shims, I can't recall. They were probably 25, someone there. Because I just went back to stock pads. I don't need no high dollar pads. Like, I, like I've said in the past, this car is a uh, preservation, not a restoration. So, and to, to get them off, all this, the ring, I will show you the one from the kit. Let me just put this stuff out on the counter so it's out of the way. It's just a ring, which is split. Uh, but and it's right here. I don't know if you can see that in the camera. So the easiest way I have found is just to take a screwdriver or something to get underneath the ring itself. There we go. I'm going to reach around behind it and just feed it around comes right off and then the gut then the seal itself is this one's being a little stubborn well, there's a lot of rust on the bottom of that it sits let's see if I can get turn around here the bottom side where the ring is sits right here around the bottom and then the upper part the inner part of the seal sits inside this groove so the next thing we need to do is try and get those pistons out now there's different ways you can go about it I used a uh, a air gun my air chisel first I, I let it sit with penetrant which I didn't do which I'm going to pull this one apart let it sit with penetrant let this sit with penetrant but in the meantime I'm going to clean everything up uh, to get it to the point to where once I get it rebuilt and put back together or uh, get the pistons in well, we can go to uh, painting them, but um, so let me put some penetrant on this, and we will see if we can get them out. You can use on the one side. You can't do it on this side. Well, you can, but you got to pump somehow pump it into that little orifice using a grease gun but then you got to clean out that orifice in the inside of all that grease which I don't care I mean it's a good idea you could take an airline if you got I I have an air gun but I don't have the uh, a, a rubber tip to make a seal to push that out which that would be the easier way to do it uh, all I have is this which I don't think will work let me pull that seal first find the ends it's right there Get my tool that worked good and that wasn't it stick myself There we go. And if you hurt uh, this seal, who cares? They're going in the junk, in the trash anyway. Okay. There's a lot of junk in there. Let me get this. Okay. 
I may give that a go and see if it will uh, push it out. But I doubt it very seriously. I really do. Yes, it just barely fits in there. Pushing the fluid out. Still got junk in there. So let me grab my catch can. See if we can it's just so slimy uh, that it's bad it's bad brake fluid so that ain't gonna work got shit everywhere and what we're gonna use is the freaking chisel gun and I'm just gonna slip the blade it's not a sharp chisel it's just flat up underneath the lip of the piston give it a couple taps this freaking gun I should have never bought it because it constantly stops there it's moving. Tighten that down a bit. There she is. So, just to show you guys what I mean by crappy brake fluid. Take a look at that. Yeah. Okay, let me do the other one and then we'll get back over to the bench side. Well, we got them apart. Uh, this is one I just pulled apart, so it's not too bad. This is the first one we pulled apart. Look all that gunk in there. That's why you need to flush your brake fluid every so often. Do it like every five years or whatever. Or unless you see your brake fluid changing color, then it's contaminated. So something got in there and contaminated this brake system. That, and you don't mix, I think it's dot forward five uh, because then it will gum up so that's a possibility what could have happened there but this yeah that's gross so what i'm going to do is i'm going to clean them all up uh give them a cleaning with some brake clean and then we'll go from there i'm not a happy camper that these did not clean up like the other ones. These are worse. They're pitted halfway or better past where the seal will be sitting if you look inside the seal. All the way compressed would sit right about where my thumbnail was. So anything below that, and there's a couple dings, which I didn't notice I put in there with a, with the uh, chisel hammer. So what I am going to do is order two new pistons. So, but we still can keep at this. We're getting prepared and ready for whenever they do come in. Uh, what I'm going to do is pull this seal out, which is no good anymore. Out of both of these and uh, we are going to put some 
sandpaper, which is a eight, uh, I think it's a 600 grit, which I, I used the same thing as trying to clean them up as I did before. But we're just going to take some sandpaper and clean up the area below, you know, kind of below the, the, where the seal would be, but also clean up the upper section to get it prepared. And then we'll go and clean the rest of the caliper and probably give her, give her a shot of paint. So all I am going to do is just take this and fold it over so many times. So it makes a shape of my finger and just sit there and work the, the, the cylinder. <laughs> this far and I cleaned it up with the wire wheel washed it down with brake clean I did do all the bores they're nice and clean the groove for the seal I cleaned and now I'm packing uh, a paper towel as a packer just so I can cover because when we paint we're not going to want to uh, get paint inside or on these bolt holes these put that this surface you don't want to get paint on that. And then I'm going to take a uh, razor blade and trim. Around the around this edge, but I won't on this edge because it don't really need it. And then there's one or two more holes. You don't want to get paint in is the is the uh, inlet for the hose, and I cleaned up the bleeder. And we're just going to slip that down in to where she says finger snug. Wrap some tape around it. And she is ready to get a facelift. So 
So I'll hang these up over on the wire for paint and then just give them a coat. Hopefully we don't get a lot of glare, but I'm using a Krylon rust top. Uh, it's an enamel high gloss. And just give her a coat. Try to cover everything that you can from every direction. Sorry, I'm trying to hold the camera at the same time. I don't want to get it too thick. I'm trying to get the back side here. And you want to watch because in here, once you're done, that's where the pad dried on each side that you ain't going to want to have it too thick. You, I would take some sandpaper and uh, Just scratch that off and now we'll let that dry. I only got one wire, so we'll throw the other one on once it's dry. Okay, well, I'm going to have to call it at that because I got to wait for those pistons to come in to finish it up. So this is going to be a two-part uh, video. So keep your eyes open for that. But I really do appreciate all of you. And if you haven't yet subscribe because it helps out the algorithm leave a comment that also helps out and it's an easy way for me to find your channel uh if i i do check out uh your channels i do check you out uh almost every single one of you uh yeah i am a small channel right now but hey you know i can check i can reply to almost all my comments which i try to do um, but yeah, give me a big thumbs up and not the finger and Hey, why don't you go check that video out and we'll see you on the next one.